Welcome, welcome, everyone. And we are live. Welcome to another show, another podcast of the Cash Geeks Network. Are you sure we're live? We're live. Let's go. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I know we changed the time to the podcast. So we are a little bit earlier, 5 p.m. Eastern. That's going to be the new time because, as you guys know, I have kids. So, uh, well, I have a kid and another kid on the way. So now I have things to do later at night. So I got to do the podcast earlier, make the wife happy, you know. Um, but super pumped for today because I think today's message and guest is going to be the most impactful in today's market than ever before. Um, I've been watching this guy on social media for a decent amount of time now. Um, he probably doesn't know it, but, um, I am super pumped to have my man, Raphael on. Let's go ahead and bring him on. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, what's up, man? What's up? What's up, man? Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, man. I'm excited. So we're good. <clears throat> All right, zoom in. Boom. There we go. Now, now, now I can match, match your go. size, bro. Big head. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. So, uh, dude, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to ask a lot of questions. I do get very detailed in my questions, but with that being said, man, what, where are you at? Where are you based out of? Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you, man. First off, thanks for having me. Um, it's uh, it's always fun, man, to get uh, to get into this, uh, you know, the Q and A portion of it. Um, I'm out of Phoenix. I've been wholesaling for the last since 2009. Uh, I started doing you know fix and flips and wholesale and that sort of thing. I've had a couple of businesses in between, um, or while I've been doing real estate as well. I now run a real estate brokerage as well. I coach a lot of real estate, and uh, I do um, uh, consulting for businesses in in, in general. Uh, when it comes to systems and processes and that sort of thing, so, so yeah, nice. stay pretty active in the uh, in the uh, Phoenix, Arizona market. So, out of all <clears> those <throat> um, ventures that you have, which one is your favorite? Coaching, man. Coaching. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah it's it's uh, it's I, it's one of my favorite ones. It's just like there, there's a thing about you know having the 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 responsibility of coaching that makes you hold space. Mm. So you have to have your stuff dialed in. Yeah. And I mean, I'm telling you, man, if you're really, if you're really in it and it like it, it uh, resonates with you, you end up dialing your stuff because you know, you have to, you know, have your shit together uh, to Correct. be able to talk about it to students. Right. So no, absolutely. Yeah, by far it's coaching. Yeah. That's awesome. man. And I definitely agree with that, man. Cause when I, I remember just me starting to get into like personal branding <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. And, and it forces you to kind of do some things that you wouldn't typically do because now you have to have all your ducks in a row, make sure that you're, you're performing and yeah. um, it holds you accountable. So 100%. Yeah. Oh, I 100%. love that. That's awesome. So break it down for me. What exactly is it that you help out investors with? Um, so a lot of people come to me for, I mean, I, I do, I do coach, for example, the newer real estate, you know, investor who's getting into the, the business and, you know, teach them how to get to the, you know, to, to their first deal and kind of, you know, grow from there. Right. So my process, kind of, you know, goes goes along those lines um, where I where I feel like my bread and butter is is, is um, sitting down on on one on one coaching uh, calls or trainings with people who are already doing deals, but they need to systemize, they need to automate, they're kind of trapped in the uh, in the, in the box of, of the doingness of everything, you know what I mean? Uh, so the crazy thing about it, man, is like we we know a lot of people don't know how to make money in real estate, they know how to, you know, wholesale and everything, but they don't know how to build the business uh, that supports that so that when they walk away, uh, you know, the thing is still humming. And right. that's, that's where I come in, yeah. That's awesome, man. And so like, <clears throat> what, are, what are you seeing is, the biggest challenge for these individuals. I'm sure a lot of people listening right now are the kind of individuals. I might be one of those individuals sometimes, right? Yeah. Um, that you know how to make money wholesaling. Um, you, you, you know everything about the industry, but it's just, it's hard to get to that next level, right? Like wh what are you seeing is that commonality of like investors that's <clears throat> 
from turning this into a business? There's two things, and and not that I want to get you know all woo woo and and you know straight into the whole you know mindset portion of it, but I think that's eighty percent of the battle that we go through, right? Like so, we this is this is a crazy thing about you know uh, getting to to a place where you hit a wall. Um, usually, when we start off, and this was my case, right? It, it, I, I mean, I didn't I bootstrapped the entire thing. I kind of went through you know the, the ropes of of going through the trench work and and making the time count and all that stuff. So I went through it, and and I mean, tenacity was unmatched. Like nobody's gonna outwork me, and I had that you mm -hmm. know that mentality, right? Because I was in survival mode. So so the the crazy thing about it is that consistency is not even an issue when you're trying to survive. Why? Because mm -hmm. you're trying to survive, right? You're trying to pay the rent. You're trying to, you know, do whatever you need to do. Mm -hmm. You make the, the car payment, buy groceries, um, you know, grow a family as we're going through. So there's stuff that's, you know, kind of like, you know, you're it's pushing you towards that goal. Now, what happens when we get out of that survival mode is, is OK, we make some cash, we close a few deals and we have this standard of living that now it's covered. Right. So so I see it all the time where people get, you know, the three or four, you know, good paychecks, 50 Kers, 100 Kers, and, and now it's more money than, than we're used to on a regular basis. So that yeah. survival mode instinct, that bite just starts to, to, uh, you know, dim down little by little, yeah. little by little. They so, get lazy. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Um, and, uh, and I think conformity sense sets in. Now, the right. thing about that is that it's not going to, it's, it doesn't last, right? Because you don't have something that's sustainable yet. Right. Um, so you have spikes and then you see that you, you see that conformity come in and then, um, really, um, just kind of, you know, mess up the flow of things and the consistency of things. That's one, that's one case scenario. Uh, the other one is um, you you get to a point where you're you're knocking out deals and you have this innate need for control um, and you have a, mm. a big fear of loss for the stuff that you've you've built right like no I I have the consistency I have the tenacity uh, but if I don't do it myself it's gonna be wrong so you right. you uh, you hold yourself back from delegating and and actually building the processes the systems and and all the stuff that's not sexy man but but it's right. like that's that's the the when we're talking about entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship and freedom, like that's really what it takes. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's a, a ton of stuff to unwrap there, but, but, uh, it, it, the biggest, at the end of the day, the biggest challenge to answer your question is going to be ourselves. We get to this point where the mm -hmm. stuff that we, we, we were doing before is not going to, you know, propel right. us to that next level. And it, it, it's just requiring another version of ourselves. Yeah. That's, <clears throat> that's, um, I'm happy we're going in this direction because, a lot of people are a lot of people question you know my success on how i got to where i'm at in a certain age range or whatever and when i tell people that it's because i went to tony robbins when i was 19 that you know that like <clears throat> people can't comprehend that right Did you make your move I'm, I made my move <laughs> i walked on fire so i've run Robbins twice and i've crewed once game changer um, yeah and so things like that is really why i am where i am right it's really why i look at challenge the way that i look at it the way that i um embrace opportunity or push myself or you know make your move and really you think anything is is possible and it really is right um but to some people that's too rah rah and too like you know um for a lot of people, that's bullshit, right? Yeah. And and some people are just born with it or grow up with it, and so they don't have to go through those, you know, um, breakdown of your limiting beliefs. But for people who didn't grow up with that, um, and and when I say grow up with it, it's just like some people do don't have limiting beliefs, right? They're just growing. They grow up being told, Hey, you can do whatever you want and I will support you in all areas of life. And you know, you're going to be successful and blah, 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 blah. Some people aren't, you know, always blessed with that. And, yeah. or it gets them to a certain level, but like you're saying, you, you hit a wall, right? Yeah. Getting to that next level is for me, it's Tony Robbins, man. And, or, or just something in that, uh, realm, <clears throat> right? Personal development, Jim Rohn, right? Whatever it is, just, just it really improving yourself um, versus just like, what's the next, you know, what's the best thing I can say on my script and what's the, you know, the best marketing channel. Uh, 
don't get me wrong those things are very important right but to to break that wall it's not going to be a marketing channel that breaks the wall it's not going to be a um you know a, a script that you do or a new unique postcard or a new text program or whatever right yeah that's really not going to break the wall um or break the ceiling that you're reaching so that's let's talk uh, about that a little bit that's 100 percent true man it's um the, the crazy thing about it right like everything is what we do in business the stuff that we pay for when we go to coaching oh i want this person to teach me how to you know wholesale i want this right. person to teach me how to build a business it's all nuts and bolts Right. It's all nuts and bolts. Like it's all. I mean, we have frameworks. Like for example, for my like everything I do in terms of of consulting and all that stuff. There's frameworks in place that you can take from one, you know, uh, vertical to to the other one and whatnot. Right. Uh, at the end of the day, like you can have the best systems, you can have the best team, you can right. have you know the the resources and the money and everything available and ready for you. Uh, but if you're not right up here, if you're not right, if your mindset is not dialed in, and I, dialed in is the wrong term. But if your if your mindset is not um, conducive for growth, yeah, um, you are gonna hit a wall. Why? Because right. se self doubt is gonna kill everything around you. Um, the, the crazy thing is that it's we can't turn it off. Self doubt right. always happens. Like we'll see people crushing it, and, you know, just killing it out there. And it's like, man, this person is full of confidence. Man, this person is thriving. Man, this person is doing this, doing that. Um, oh, man, I wish I could do that. That's, I mean, it's for them. It's not for me. Um, and all these thoughts, right? All this negative thinking just, you know, kind of, you know, starts to layer up. Um, but the reality is that, like, yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be a time factor. People have just been in in the in the game for ten years longer than you have, so it's gonna right. be you know, a, a, a default, right? right. Uh, the second one is like, yeah, somebody may have their talent in this one particular lane, uh, but it doesn't mean that you can't crush it in, in, in your lane, right? right. So I, I feel like a lot of that stuff, a lot of those conversations really happen because um, they're, they're, they're not, they're unaware conversations that are going on. So, Meaning that uh, we don't sit down with ourselves and really pencil out, okay, what do I want my life to f uh, to be, right? What do I want to be, you know, really, really kill myself for the next ten years, or do you want to? Do I want to build a business that just gets to this X spot and I, that's where I find joy, right. um, or do I want to blow, you know, everybody out of the water? Like it's two very different missions, yep, right? And I feel like just kind of going with the uh, with the waves of everything around us is going to get us to a point that can be sometimes very dangerous. We'll find ourselves uh, competing for something that we don't even want. We'll find ourselves feeling bad about stuff that, you know, we don't even care about. You know what I mean? It's like, man, I don't have exactly. that. The person does this. I don't give two shits. About them. I don't know if I can, you know, cuss or whatever, but, but it's, oh, good, good. <laughs> you're good. You're good here. You know, no it's, it's, uh, you know, for stuff that doesn't really matter to our own yeah. personal vision. And, and the crazy thing is that we can't dedicate that time to grow that personal vision, to figure out what we want as individuals and then drive that through. Right. As opposed right. to just taking everything that we're seeing. I mean, we see highlights on, on, on social media from everybody. Um, yeah. and it, that, that can be noise. Noise is dangerous, right? Especially when you're trying to focus in as an entrepreneur and, and pick your lane. So, so yeah, yeah all that stuff is going to get in the way unless you have uh, clarity over your direction. So, so, so what does it mean to be, uh, I guess, an organizational psychologist? The uh, so basically it's putting people and systems together. So you have to go through okay. general psychology to kind of, you know, do and then i specialized in business psychology so that's what it comes down to um understanding people and processes and how each one kind of fits into, into um, each other i mean you have certain roles right um you've probably heard about all the uh, personality assessments dis right. yeah. yeah so the uh the the cool thing about it is or the crazy thing is that all those things are out there and and a lot of companies you know deploy them right they'll put them into their their sops and whatnot but they don't take the context the actual information to to build communication channels with their team to figure mm -hmm. out uh where somebody fits best right for what role and how to support them based on their behavioral strengths so organizational psychology plays a lot into that space and then of course productivity and efficiency in, in the systems and processes so it's taking both angles the nuts and bolts of the business and then the behavioral strengths of the team and putting all that stuff uh, together yeah oh that makes sense that makes sense so what are some of the i guess 
I want I want to get into <clears throat> some to some nuggets. What come are, on, what come are on! They, I don't hold back. <laughs> what are some of the most important things that business owners need to have in place when it comes to systems and people? Um, it it's it depends. It's a timely thing. So so for example, right? If you're just getting started in business, what you're gonna need is very different than somebody who's been in the business for five years. Got it. it it's very different. Um, and, and, uh, you know, the old, I, I feel like the old way of doing, of starting or launching was, you know, to kind of check the boxes off of a business plan and then uh, theorize and do a lot of projections and that sort of thing. Right. Um, that's kind of like the first exposure that I had to business development. <clears throat> I was, I was still working at the fire department back then, and I was trying to launch my first business. And uh, I went to the SBA and they gave me a checklist of stuff that I needed to do. Right. <clears throat> so I, I don't know, I spent like six months crafting this thing and I didn't need any of it. Like what, <laughs> what I needed was maybe, maybe three, three things, three or four things out of that whole stack. Yeah. And then the tenacity to go after it because I, I, right. I sat there planning and, and just theorizing about projections and numbers and all kinds of stuff for a long time when I was missing opportunities to, to actually go in there and deploy it. So if you're saying like, for example, depending on, on what stage of the business you're in, um, your, your needs are going to be, are going to be different. Um, I'll, I'll give you stage one business. Somebody's launching up, you know, it's bootstrap. It, it's, uh, you know, they're rolling into the market. It doesn't matter if it's wholesale. I, I did the same thing with my real estate brokerage. Uh, so it's, there's certain things that you're going to, they're going to, um, uh, line up as priorities, right? So your first priority as a startup business is going to be profit. It doesn't like it's not. And this is the argument that we get all the time. It's like it's not following my purpose. I don't care about purpose right now. We care about profit. If you can't keep the lights on, uh, your purpose is not going to flourish. Correct. Okay, so so you have to focus on profit. Yep. Um, and um, the next thing, it's going to be systems. So profit, process. Then the third thing is people. Um, the reason it's in in that uh, in that sequence is because, again, if you don't have profits, you can't keep the lights on. You're just launching a business as a new entrepreneur. Uh, so your, your processes are not dialed in, right? right. So if you start hiring and, yep. and plugging people into it, um, the, uh, the, the accountability factors are not in place and, and I mean, it just gets messy. So that's why people come in third, not that we don't care about people. Uh, but like, for example, that's a, that's a priority in a level one business. If you, if you're talking to a level four business, um, the, everything changes because you've developed your business along the way. So now your priority is going to be people. We're looking for talent that comes in and works the process, which is going to be lined up in second tier. And then the third priority is going to be profits. Why? Because you have an engine now that's already pumping, hmm. uh, you know, revenue. So it changes, right. As we're going right. through it, um, when you're talking about nuts and bolts, but, um, I mean, if you want to bring it back to like chapter one, man, like it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's almost heartbreaking to see how many people give up while yeah. they're going through the process before they even, you know, they even test the, uh, the waters. Like it, right. it's, yeah, the, the tenacity is, is just, you know, it can be brittle sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so <clears throat> I would, I would venture to believe that a lot of the people listening are probably going to be in like stage three maybe and i don't know what your stages are right but yeah i'm thinking of stage four of people are first and i would i would venture to believe people listening are probably going to be on like stage two and three okay right some stage four um so with that being said what are you seeing right now right because right now i'm sure you're experiencing people who maybe were doing better you know a year ago than they are now um or maybe not i don't know right but um i see i seem to uh, i seem to see a trend of you know a year ago we were all crushing it and now some of us are crushing it right um and some of us are still doing decent right and so like <clears throat> mindset wise for somebody who has been in the industry for you know five years plus couple years maybe they got started and you know, 2018, 2019. Um, and then now things aren't really, uh, the, the same, or maybe they have to refigure things out. Like, are you working with people like that, that are currently going through stuff like that? And then like, what, what are you seeing that's working for them or helping them out? 
Um, yeah, I do. I mean, like I said, I work with all all tiers. It, it depends. Like the uh, the the coaching programs are different for each each level. Um, but the uh, what I'm seeing right now, I mean, a lot of people just kind of fell off the wagon, right? If you started after 2018, let me just first you know, unpopular opinion, but put it, put this out there. You haven't seen the uh, the the ups and downs. Right. You've seen the ups in 2020 when prices got right. Well, tight inventory got low, uh, so we could you know just negotiate anything, slap it on the MLS, or put it out to a buyer's list, and people just fight for it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean we're living dog years right now when it comes to real estate. Yeah. Uh, I mean that's that might as well be you know a decade and a half ago. <laughs> so, yes. um, what I'm seeing right now, one of the things that I like, one of my mantras is hustle is a season. It's not a business strategy right? Hustling is a season. Hustle is a season. Mm. It's not a business strategy. It's not sustainable. Um, we, it's, it's one, it's a behavioral tool that we need to go back to, you know, every now and then, because yeah, we're going to have to hustle through, through certain things. Right. But as we're going through that process, we have to, we have to, we have to systemize, we have to switch our thinking from hustler to entrepreneur, right? <clears throat> start delegating, start automating. Stuff. Right. Um, the reason you don't see people crushing it, like we used to is because that hustle factor is not as effective as it was. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. for example, there's only so much you can hustle to, to hit a certain amount of uh, volume. Right. Yeah. Uh, but if you have systems in place, you can empower people around you and your volume that you're able to hit is going to grow exponentially. So you're just right. able to hit, for example, I don't know, more marketing campaigns, yeah. um, you know, <clears throat> negotiate more deals. Why? Because you have more acquisitions people. So, so that the, um, the, a lot of the stuff in our industry, I mean, we see it all the time. We have a lot of solopreneurs or people operating with, you know, one or two people and, you know, the VA and I, I close the deals and I display the deals and, you know, do everything. Right. The thing is that all that stuff got, got harder. Yeah. Uh, we see it in attrition, right? We see it in attrition level when we're, um, <laughs> uh you know looking at the deals that you know what's your closing ratio on deals deals under contract versus deals sold so there is an attrition um percentage there like we see that you know drop um, it's not the same as it used to be a couple of years ago right yeah, yeah. ours dropped and, and like i can see in every single one of my students you know we we're doing stuff to mitigate that kind of stuff but they definitely drop so right. so it's it's that man like it, it's it's really when we talk about the uh, the entrepreneur mentality it's not just about the you know setting up the 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 automations the follow-ups and then onboarding people and training them it's not just that it's it's about that inner story that's happening so as right. as business owners man, we have to look at the nuts and bolts of, of everything that's going on more importantly we have to stay aware of where we are at right mm. Um, if we don't, if we don't bring the motivation, if we don't bring the, uh, like the energy into, into those conversations and empower the team, um, none of the rest, like none of the rest matters. And then what right. happens, what, what's happened over the last couple of years is that difficulty levels. I mean, they just, you know, keep increasing is, you know, deals get tighter, policy yep. gets tighter. Anybody yeah. who's, who's doing cold calling or SMS can tell you that much. Um, Absolutely. you know what I mean? The, the, uh, efficiency of the leads and, and, you know, marketing budgets like it just gets tighter and and yeah. the heat you know gets gets hotter so so that's what's happening that's what's happening but it, it's not just a matter of of um of moving you know processes and systems around i think it's a matter of just understanding where you're at as an entrepreneur and what kind of battle like do you want to go to so right so, right and so like how are you helping people navigate through these times through that challenge so i mean it's we have this is the crazy thing, right? A lot of people come to me because of the, the, again, the systems and the processes and the model and the step one, step two. I, ha I have a very pragmatic way of looking at business, okay. um, which gets rid of the emotional part, right? Now, that's that's kind of like, like I said, it's it's the the um, the hook to get people into the into the space. But but at the end of the day, we end up working a lot on the mindset portion of it. Right. Uh, on the uh, on the um, endurance, right? We we have to build up that that like endurance muscle. Um, and the people who are who are batting, like they're doing well, it, it's because they actually stick with it. They give it enough time, they follow the process. More importantly, they work on themselves. I'm an avid reader. I'm always, you know, looking at uh, uh, just new ways to expand the mindset, right? Stay open. And, and um, one one thing, man, that I do on a regular basis, and it's it's almost a, I mean, I think my my entire um, student base does it as well at this point. But um, we we are we're big on on top threes. So I call them top threes. It's um, 
it, we roll that into the business, but basically it's your top three personal priorities. So as we're going through like our, our, our weekly operation meetings and everything, we cover what our top three personal priorities. They have nothing to do with the business. And mm -hmm. one of the things that it does is it just refreshes our mind on a weekly basis about what we're about. Like, why are we going through all these, you know, pains and struggles of growth and, and, and opening up new marketing, you know, strategies. And, and like, at the end of the day, we want to live, right? Like that's the entire thing. Um, so I, I feel like empowerment comes in and yes, it comes in, in, in the coaching factor, right? You know, I show people how to lead generate. I show people how to, you know, negotiate deals, structure them acquisitions, how to dispositions. We have this elaborate dispo process. All of that stuff is it's, it's a map. I mean, you can buy a map at a store, right? Right. The map is going to be different. It's going to be, you know, whatever. Right. But, but it's, again, it's nuts and bolts. The, um, mm -hmm. the, um, the soft skills I think is, is the biggest portion of it and the biggest um, common denominator to success. Like how well are, um, do we cope with working on ourselves, right? Leaving right. that ego aside, understanding that we don't know it all and yep. we can dive into uh, things with an open mind uh, and, and be trainable, be coachable. I'm coachable. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And so what are, what are some of the books that you like reading right now or so, maybe something that you've read recently? Uh, one of my top, um, I think, I feel like all time uh, top books is going to be Psycho Cybernetics. Uh, Psycho Max Cybernetics. Psycho Cybernetics, yeah, by Maxwell Maltz. Um, it's a really good book. It's got nothing to do with real estate. Um, it's actually a surgeon that wrote the book, uh, but it's know. a book about psychology. Uh, so think about practical psychology, like the uh, self image plays into it. Uh, but he has a very, very um, easy way of breaking down uh, how to reframe your, your self image. And at the end of the day, oh. It's not, I mean, it's in, and, and I'm not just, you know, I'm not talking about, okay, like how I look in the mirror, right? It's about how we see ourselves in terms of belief, uh, yes. in terms of, uh, um, you know, sense of worthiness and, and, and ambition and all that stuff. So, so it's a, it's a really good book. It's gotta be one of my top, top three That's books. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely, I haven't read that one, so I definitely need to look into that one. No, it's a solid read. Yeah. That's awesome, yeah. man. Um, so Tactical Real stuff. Estate King says good stuff. Thanks, man. <laughs> so, so tactical stuff on um, <coughs> conversion rates of deals. Right? Yeah. So, so you talk about that's something that you guys track a lot, right? So, what are what are some of the what are some of the KPIs that you kind of look for? I'm sure as a business coach, you probably have certain things that you can like. Hey, tell me these ten things, and I'll tell you everything about your business. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like what are yeah. those things that you look at as a as a coach to break down someone's business? So I mean, I, I have this this whole elaborate uh, scorecard that we plug stuff into on a regular basis. It just I mean, it really becomes the backbone of, of an uh, uh, an operation. Um, but I can give you like some of the most important ones. For example, in 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 lead generation, right? We can we can get super granular. Oh, look, man, I wanna I wanna track this. I wanna track that. There's a, first off, let's understand that there's a big difference between KPIs, key performance indicators, and then navigators. Uh, mm. Navigators are the rest of the metrics. It's everything that's not necessarily going to move the needle right now, right? It may have an impact in a month, two, two months, three months. But key performance or, uh, indicators or KPIs, they move the, the needle now. Got so it. so it's, it's about understanding like some of the biggest things. For example, um, if, um, if my... my my we call it the locked to sold ratio right deal deals locked versus deals sold if that ratio improves right it, it moves the needle now that's you know it's a kpi it's one of the things that we look at on the dispo <clears throat> side got it um and then there's things like for example that will you know cost per click that's a navigator it's not necessarily a kpi right. uh it's a navigator like it, it's gonna correlate eventually right but it's not something that if we improve it right now, it's gonna it's gonna you know give me more more deals to close. It's just cost per click. Right. So so it's it's important to understand those those two things. What I've seen is a lot of people just go into the uh, into the the weeds of of tracking everything, and then the entire operation becomes this this big giant scorecard, um, right. and and focused on the KPIs, the tracking, the numbers, and all that stuff, as opposed to actually getting signatures on deals and getting them sold. Right. right? <laughs> so, so 
be mindful of that. That's one of the, one of the biggest things. Um, I can tell you the, like just off the top of my head with the stuff that we're tracking, for example, on, 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 um, lead generation campaigns, right? My lead gen metrics. Um, those are some of the, the ones that we stay on like Hawks because they, if lead gen doesn't move nothing else works. Right. right? Um, also don't make the mistake of slowing down. I know we're going into, you know, mid November, December, uh, and it's the holidays and oh, I'm going to stop marketing because it's Christmas. Like, no people go into trouble in Christmas. Too. Absolutely. Um, so I would, I would me, me and my business partner always say the deal that you get right now during Christmas, typically are always the best deals. Oh, a, a thousand percent, man. We get, we usually get that. Yeah. The, the biggest deals, uh, there's also people strategizing for tax, you know, uh, uh, purposes for next year. Right now, yep. the stuff that you lock up in, in late November, December, it's going to be opening up your next year. So you're not even going to see that revenue right now. You're going to see it. You know, do you want to have money in January? Okay. Then, then yeah. continue, continue on what you're doing. Correct. Correct. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, let me just put that out there because a lot of people just kind of, you know, get their uh, foot off the, the gas when it comes to the holidays. Um, don't just keep it consistent. Now, uh, the stuff that we're tracking, we track, uh, we track controlled reach. That's uh, the first metric when it comes to, to lead generation and we have different campaigns, right? So for, we do control, I'll, I'll just go over the cold calling. Controlled reach. Sorry. Just. So when you, when you drop a list into a power dialer, for example, right, that power dialer is going to cycle through, through a certain amount of numbers. So uh -huh. how many numbers do we actually hit today? Right. That's a controlled reach. It's a number that we can control. <clears throat> um, the next thing that we're going to see, uh, is going to be uh, contacts. Yeah. How many, yeah. So how many people actually, you know, how many contacts, not, not conversations, but contacts, how many contacts that we have, did we actually, you know, leave a voicemail or did we, you know, some type of contact, somebody answered, maybe hung up or whatever. Right. Wrong number. Um, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's just contacts. So that's to check for, for example, the quality of the data, like that's going to wow. give us a story in between those two. Um, and then we track conversations, how many conversations lasted. Um, and we have it, we have it more than a minute and a half. How many conversations actually lasted? motion for us in terms of tracking the quality right so if they if they answer and they say no leave me the hell alone I'm like it's not a conversation <laughs> so right. so again this is gauging now the quality of the list so depending on the avatar that we're hitting what kind of list are we pulling um you know what kind of filters are we throwing into that list that will tell us that tells us a story right right um and then of course we track leads and at the cold caller level the leads are, are just people who are, you know, they're interested. They just, okay, cool. So let's, let's talk about an offer. Right. So it's not, we're not going through a pre-qualification process. We're not, you know, going into this discovery call or anything like that. Uh, we're just plowing through records, right? Yeah. So leads. Um, now when you move that over uh, and a lead happens, it goes over to my lead manager. Right. So they automatically drop it into a form, goes into my uh, podio uh, setup and everybody gets notified. And then my lead manager calls that person and they'll go into this pre-qualifying conversation. I have it broken down uh, in uh, cold callers and lead managers because the uh, the um, the training is different. Like the uh, the behavioral strengths that you're going to need from a lead manager are very different than something that you're going to need from an acquisitions rep, for example. Right. Um, it's. Um, and uh, when they're when they're going into that pre-qualifying conversation, uh, there's there's some critical criteria that they hit along the way, and they dequalify people. Right. Uh, so yeah, if somebody makes it over through that conversation, and they qualify them. Now they push it over to acquisitions, <clears throat> right? So now we're tracking the leads and how many got converted to prospects. Does that make sense? <laughs> Absolutely. So leads and prospects, and then of course we track how much money that we spend on that campaign. Got so, it. so now we're, we're looking at, you know, cost per lead, cost per prospect after it closes, we're looking at cost per deal on any given, you know, particular campaign. Um, and it becomes, I mean, it's not, it's not a difficult process, man. Once you have it all set up and it's all linear, uh, it's, I mean, we literally jump on calls where, where my team uploads their KPIs and, uh, and we go over them in a, in a, you know, 45 minute meeting and you kind of like, it's a state of the union meeting, right? Like we right. go in there bring in the cold callers. We just kind of, you know, issues processing and, and all that stuff. Um, so we do that once a week. And then during the week, we'll touch base with huddles. So we do every a morning huddle every single morning and, and, uh, and touch base on, on how are we doing? You know, what's going on? You know, do you need help with any deals? Like that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, the KPIs themselves, 
um, those are transferable too. Like, because you can, you can think about the same stuff on a PPC campaign. It's going to be named different. It's going to be named cost per click instead of leads. Yep. It's going to be, you know what I mean? So, um, but the, um, the essence of the KPI is still the same thing. And then we do that for SMS as well. Another thing that we track kind of for, for text messaging is deliverability, um, which is kind of like the, uh, the contacts. So, so the cool thing about it is that you'll see trends, you'll see tendencies. So as we go and we have this, this elaborate, uh, every week we just kind of stack the KPIs and I like going back to it and looking at trends like, Oh, like these two weeks were, were low. What happened? Did we hit a different mm -hmm. list? Did we, was there something going on with interest rates? Well, the, you know, right. what was it? You know, what was the story behind those numbers? Right. So that's really what, um, what KPIs do. It's not just about tracking everything. It's about being able to to identify what the story of the numbers is telling us yeah does yeah. that make sense no absolutely yeah. so for most of your clients do they have cold call and lead managers virtual yeah um, and then acquisitions in-house or, or is acquisitions also virtual uh no in-house well Mine is virtual technically he's in yuma right. but he's in the states so my cold callers are filipino cold callers um, my lead manager, Filipino man, uh, lead manager, I've, uh, she's been with me since 2000, what, 17, 18, I think. Wow. So she started awesome. as a cold caller and then uh, um, moved, uh, moved over to lead management. So she's actually running my, my, uh, my team. Real estate King is asking how old, how old am I? 40. So damn, you're 40. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> man, I hope I look like you when I'm 40. <laughs> That's awesome, Thank you. Man. Hell yeah. Thank you. Um, and yeah, to answer your question, it's, it's, so we have a mix of VAs that run a big portion of the, uh, of the business, keep the cost low and everything. We give them spiffs with bonuses and, you know, after closings and, and that sort of thing. Got it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, my acquisitions team and dispo team is, is we have, so let me break it down. So I have cold callers. I have a lead manager. It's also in the Philippines. Um, acquisitions is in the States. My dispo manager is in the States. He's actually sitting there in the office. Nice. Um, and, um, and then I have a Dispo marketing manager. She's a Filipino uh, VA okay. as well. She crushes. She, I mean, she goes through the entire process that we build out. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, so that's, you know, essentially, essentially it. when you have, when you have it laid out like that and volume go, um, starts to go up, you can plug people into those same, right, same tiers. Right. So, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And so what have you done on your dispo side? I know you mentioned you have a very robust dispo process, right? So yeah, our dispo process is it's a 21 day dispo process. So from one day dispo. Yeah. Like every single, every mean? single day, every single day, something happens when we have a deal that we need to push every single day. Ah, something happens. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I so from, from day one, uh, we, we, a deal comes into the whiteboard, right? So, uh, we have we have a, a bunch of automations just set up. You click a button, get a contract, comes back signed. When it comes back signed automatically, Dispo gets notified. It uh, pushes over to uh, the uh, Dispo marketing yep. uh, rep. So she starts working on the on the website, on the page. The file, yeah, 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 exactly. So at this point, we're opening escrow with uh, transaction coordination, and then the marketing is also firing up. So wow. day one, I mean, we have, I think we have a set of about seven, seven things that happen on day one. Boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom, boom. And then uh, we hit, um, one thing that I did was uh, we, we had the, the general list, right? The big list of the buyers, the cash buyers. Uh, and then we, like everybody else, we had a VAP list. Okay. And then um, as the years kind of went by, we were building relationships. So we're just closer relationships with a, with a few people, with a handful of people. Yep. And uh, so, I mean, I couldn't call it the VAP list because that name was already <laughs> taken. So yeah. I called it the A-list, right? The so A -list. I have, yeah, I have an A-list, a VAP list, and then my general list. Got it. And um, the general list, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's 45, 50,000 people email or emails on it at this right, point. Right. VAP is a lot smaller. We have, I don't know, maybe 2,000, 2,500 people in there. Yep. And then the A-list, it's actually people who we call, pick up the phone, and we call. We'll send them a text message uh, with the property link and everything, and we'll pick up the phone and call them. Got it. That's a very, you know, much smaller number. So yep. we're always working on those lists, cleaning them up. Uh, you know, people make it into the A list. People make it out of the A list depending yep. on how active they are and that sort yep. of thing. So that's helped that's us true. keep a, a, um, a really good, um, just you know, really good pulse on on what's going on, what people are buying, like who's active. Uh, no pun intended. 
actually pun intended, but, uh, but, <laughs> but it's, it's uh, you know what I mean? As, as, yeah. as like, I feel like now it's more important than ever to be proactive on the dispo side. So Agreed. you have to be a salesperson on the disposition <clears throat> side. It didn't yeah. used to be that way. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I, I got started back in 2015 and I was working for a wholesale company. That's how I got started. Nice. And my job was dispo and, um, Dispo in 2015, 2016, and 2017 was nice. a lot different than how it was 2018, 2019, and then even more different than 2020, 2021, <laughs> you know, and all that. For um, sure. And right now, it's feeling like <clears throat> it's feeling like 2017 vibes, right? Like 2015, 2016, it was harder to dispo because there just wasn't that many people getting into the space, right? Yeah. After like 2016, 2017, by, by the time it was like 2018, Dispoing got a little bit easier because everybody wanted to buy real estate, right? Yeah. Everybody would, was a flipper. Everybody was a landlord. Everybody wanted to, you know, whatever, right? So the buyer pool, I think, opened up. It got sexy. More, real estate right? got sexy. Right. Real estate <laughs> got sexy. So now wholesale was like, oh, well, these people are buying more. And then 2020 came and it was just like, everybody can buy anything Yeah. Um, after COVID, obviously. And then, you know, and then don't even get me started on freaking hedge funds, right? Like <laughs> then the hedge <laughs> funds came like right after COVID. Um, and then now it's just like, well, shit, now I have to actually work at Dispo, right? Yeah. Um, and luckily I have the the benefit of, you know, I was around back then, um, but I have seen the whole Dispo wave, right, kind of evolve. And, and you're absolutely spot on, right? Like you have to be proactive on the dispo side right now. Um, yeah. If, if you're not in a, in a relationship building mode, like, man, it's, it's going to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> that's all, yeah. You know, that's what, that's what I can say for sure. Uh, I kind of got started the same way, man, back in uh, 2000. So I had another business and I sold the business. Um, had nothing to do with real estate. It was a, a medical transportation business. And I sold that and, and I wanted to get into, I'd done a few flips and I'd done, you know, <clears throat> kind of, you know, tested the waters a little bit. The, um, the, and Sean Terry puts out an, um, an email broadcast. Like he's, he's looking for an acquisitions guy and he's in my backyard. Yeah. Dude, you're in the, you're in the freaking best market for, for, yeah. um, if you're going to work for someone in real estate in the beginning, move to Phoenix because you have yeah. a lot of throw, throw a rock and you're going to hit yeah. a guru, man. Like, <laughs> Correct. That's awesome. So, 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 uh, the, that's the, uh, I call it the, the Sean Terry effect, but, but so he had a lot of his, um, seminars here in town. Yeah. Like the flip to freedom seminars. And I don't know if you ever followed his stuff or whatnot. Was Absolutely, bro. That, dude, that was the only people teaching. OG, OG man. Clothier, so I, Terry. Yeah. Yeah. I started working with him. My idea was because I already sold the business. Right. And I was like, my idea was to be there for about a year and kind of, you know, understand it, get a paid internship, you know, type of deal. Um, so I sit down with them. It's like, yeah, I'm going to give you all I got uh, for at least a year. You know, that's what I, that, that was very transparent at the beginning. And I ended up staying uh, running acquisitions uh, there for for three years, or just under three years. Uh, but man, it was like that's trial, awesome. trial by fire. Do like and talk about, you know, sitting in front of sellers and, and cutting the learning curve and, and like just the, the amount of exposure I was getting. And Absolutely. the amount of reps I was able to put in, yes. I mean that that alone, dude. It's it's like you you have to put in the reps. Yeah. Um. So so yeah, it's been pretty interesting to see see it from you know what it was back then, where we, I mean, just really you know like almost you know head to head combat right there with the, yeah. <laughs> with the oh, sellers. That's awesome, and man. and that's uh, awesome. how how was that man working with Sean Terry, dude? Because yeah, oh, dude. literally like flip to freedom, man. So. It's funny because the reason why I ended up in the market that I'm at is because, and shout out to Pete Cook if you're ever watching this, man. Um, so I went to work for an investor and I wanted to, <clears throat> to um, work for free to learn. So I went to a, I was going to the, like meetups, right? Yeah. I was 18 years old. I go to a meetup. I meet this guy and it was a GoBundance mastermind event. Um, I was there working for free because I just wanted to be there. And one of the guys that I meet, there's this guy named Pete and he's kind of like the only one that knows about wholesaling, right? Cause 2015 wholesaling was, you know, it was more of like being a realtor and flipping houses, right? Yeah. It wasn't like wholesaling was kind of becoming a thing more and more. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. And he was like, dude, look up Sean Terry. And <clears throat> the reason why I went to work for him, bro, is because he had just bought <clears throat> Flip to Freedom, the program. Yeah. And he didn't have the time. He was, he was like a real estate broker, right? Had a successful brokerage and all this um, and flipped houses. He was like, bro, I just bought this program. And I was like, dude, I can't afford to buy that program, but I'll do it all for free. And we'll, and you just make all the money. And he was like, done. And that's how I got started. <laughs> Check. Basically. Yeah. And it was because he had the Sean Terry program. We were sending out the post, all that, man. So how, how was it working with Sean Terry, man? Um, it was fun, man. I got to see a lot of different um, aspects of it. That's actually when I started playing with with like the scorecards and, and kind of um, I got to play with his business a lot with yeah. in terms of like the systems and the processes and, right, and right. building some of the back end structure of it. Um, I was already at that point. I had a I had a bachelor's in 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 business and i was working on my first master's degree in in psychology so i didn't have the business oh, wow. psychology degree yet but but i was i was in in that lane right so i was curious about everything so i would see something um you know at school and i would go and deploy it the next day because at that oh, point it, awesome. I, I had sold my yeah, business okay. so i was like all right cool let's do th let's do this for i don't know culture let's do, yeah, do yeah. this for uh, you know scorecards let's try this on and and then a lot of it would would uh, transfer into the actual like negotiation of the deals like the closing of the deals right yeah of the entire yeah. thing as it was happening so um a lot of the guys that uh, that are doing big stuff now like they they uh they went to the 2014 15 16 Flip yeah. to freedom events absolutely yeah, so i mean that's that's where a lot of i mean really it came down to like the only <clears throat> the only like real person to learn this from for a certain time was sean terry yeah like that was like it you know yeah um yeah for so sure. a lot no, of he's, he's a great dude credit, he's a great a lot dude. of people credit all their success to those guys because they were really the only people there teaching it Oh. Yeah, it's, that's uh, that's what's so incredible, man, about planting a seed, right? You plant yeah. a seed of, of growth in somebody and it just like, for example, take take you uh, take yourself as an example. Like that's all you need it. You need a little boost and then Correct. fast forward. Yeah, like, you're crushing it. Yeah, and you're you're empowering yeah. people. You're pushing the message. You know what I mean? So oh, you're doing awesome. the thing. So so what does it look like to work with you? How can people learn more about you? Um, you know, follow you. <clears throat> I'm pretty active on social media. You can find me at uh, Rafael Cortez CEO on Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. I drop a lot of content on a weekly basis. I have a podcast, uh, the CEO Post podcast. Um, it's uh, about entrepreneurship, uh, the real Duran, the mind of entrepreneurship. I have another podcast, which is the REI Wholesaling Podcast, and that's all about real estate wholesaling. Um, and then within the CEO Pulse podcast, I have a Mindset Monday series where we just break down, you know, the psychology of entrepreneurship. So, so you can follow me there. Um, oh, and awesome. then, I mean, I, I drop a lot of stuff on on business development. It's, it's yeah, it's a lot of content, but it's a it's a it's a pretty fun channel. I, I love doing that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm pretty active on social. So DM me, shoot me a message. Dude, the way you say yeah. your name is epic. I need to start saying my name like that, man. I'm slacking. I, I say it the, <laughs> the gringo way. I'm like, yeah, I'm Gonzalo Corzo. Gonzalo. Gonzalo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm Gonzalo Corzo. Oh, oh Gonzalo. Shit. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Where are you, where are you from, man? Uh, Mexico. Well, so, I mean, I was born in the States. I was born in Yuma, okay. which is about three hours south of Phoenix. Got it. Uh, but I grew up in a border town. So oh, nice. I didn't start going to school in the States until fourth grade. Um. <laughs> Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, but my, my entire family is, is you know, border town. Or, like we barely yeah. even talked about all the stuff that, you know, um, <laughs> I'd be happy to, I want to, I wanna, you know, potentially have you back on if, if you're okay with it. Um, but, but I, I, I do love your message and, um, and I really do appreciate you doing this preaching to, to my audience and, um, hopefully something comes from this, man. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Um, before signing off, can I answer a question? Real Estate King has yeah. been dropping a few things on, on uh, YouTube, but he's, uh, can you all share what main systems uh, you use? So I use um, launch control for text messaging. I use batch leads uh, for um, pulling data. I use Podio as a CRM. I, I have a build out. Um, and then I use... A ready mode as a uh, power dialer. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, nice. So. Kind of, kind, kind of in a way similar. Um, I use PropStream for data. I use um, Cold Tools as a dialer. 
I use Podio for my CRM and smartphone as my yep. phone system within uh, Podio. Yep. And I use Google Drive. Google Drive for me is everything, man. Um, so so we, we use kind of like Google Drive in hand with Podio for once a deal becomes under con goes under contract. Then we use Google Drive for a lot of like the file storage pictures and stuff like that. We don't really put all that into Podio. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, I use Click Send, Click to Send or Click Send um, for, for emails text, for text blast <clears throat> texting. Oh, yeah. For, for the buyer side. So yeah. that integrates with Podio. So we do all of our text blasting from Podio. And that's it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I'm man. Thanks for that question. I didn't, I, I only have uh, <laughs> Facebook up, so I didn't see the, the questions on YouTube. Yeah. No, Perfect. the, uh, the only ones I can see are the, the YouTube ones. Yeah. So. Awesome. Real estate <laughs> king, man. Thanks for, thanks for, uh, asking some great questions throughout the show and for everybody yeah. who tuned in. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, if you're rewatching this or maybe you tuned in later, make sure you rewatch all of it. Uh, it's going to be on my YouTube channel, the cash geeks network, or on my Facebook, Rafael Cortez. Thank you so much again for doing this. And I will see you guys next week, Tuesday at 5 PM Eastern.